Welcome to EPG Patishala. I am Dr. T. Sai Chandramouli, former Associate Professor of English, Railway College, Usmania University, Hyderabad. In this paper, Paper 4, Module 4, we discuss the various major movements in English literary scenario. It was the fear of an impending war that dominated the first decades of the 20th century. The publication of Origin of Species in the year 1859 marked the erosion of a religious belief simultaneously along with the rise of new technologies. Foundations of uh, Christianity were shaken and Nietzsche made his controversial statement, I quote, God is dead, we have killed him, unquote, full stop. A change over from the agrarian society to the industrial resulted in the destabilization of uh, moral values, resulting in the state, acute state of uh, identity crisis, as depicted in the heap of broken images in the wasteland written by T.S. Eliot. Modernism marks a break in the Renaissance tradition of humanism and centrality of human subject or author, belief in permanent reality, perennial significance and values of literary text crystallized with the invention of printing. The disorientation of European culture was reflected in the movements of uh, Surrealism, with, with which Andhra Breton's name is uh, irrevocably aligned, Impressionism, championed by Monet, and Symbolism, where uh, Baudelaire, Rimbard, and Malarium uh, talked about the movement, Cubism, popularized by Picasso. Expressionism as seen in the paintings and pictures of Van Gogh and Monk and Gauguin and Dadaism as seen from the works of uh, Tristan Zara, etc. These uh, artists questioned the tyranny of conventional forms, colors, rhythm and harmony and represented reality as plural and subjective, affirming that art which exists for its own sake will provide the unity that is lost in contemporary society. Uh, one of the major motives of modernist literature was myth which was expected to give shape and significance to a contemporary fragmented reality. Like Aids in his uh, Byzantium poems, Iliad in the Wasteland also tries to revive the lost spirituality in the ancient and oriental cultures. The fragmentary technique of the Wasteland is also employed by Faulkner in The Sound and Fury in America. The question of time also emerges uh, as a major theme in these works and that also was a major concern for these uh, writers and uh, artists. Modernist fiction vindicated colonial ideology to a larger extent. It involved a lament for the loss of European center. The novels of Joseph Conrad and E.M. Forster offered ambiguous moral positions related to colonial issues. Virginia Woolf took a re resisting feminist stance against the mainstream male canon. Now, let's see how modernist poetry was and how it evolved and uh, attracted uh, the attention of discerning uh, readers. The First World War and its horrors greatly impacted modern poetry, not only in Europe, 
but all over. But now we are talking about uh, the situation in England. So let us confine ourselves to the context of war poetry in England. War poetry developed into two phases. In the first one, poets like Rupert Brooke did not personally experience or express the horrors of war and a song of patriotism and nobility of sacrifice. In the second one, those poets like uh, Wilfred Owen and Sigrid Sassoon, who had actually been to the war front, had known immense human suffering and depravity. Then came Georgian poetry, which reacted against the decadent transitional poetry. The Georgians aimed at putting English poetry, I quote, on a new strength and beauty, unquote, full stop. They aimed to treat natural things in a clear, natural and beautiful way, neither too modern nor too conservative, prudish like the Victorians. They endeavored to restore simplicity and naturalness to English poetry and avoided the use of archaic diction, grandiloquent expression and all pomposities associated with their creative work. Important Georgian poets are Walter de la Mea, W. H. Davis, John Mansfield, John Drinkwater, Harold Munro, and Alfred Noyes. The poetical movement, known as Imagism, was a reaction against Romanticism, especially against Georgian poetry. The Georgians lived in a world of fantasy and disease discarded the sordid realities of contemporary life. The images reacted against the hackneyed and a fantastic approach of the Georgians. It was in vogue between the years 1910 and 1918. Its first anthology, Those Images, was published in the year 1914. This work was published by Ezra Pound as the chief editor. The movement was spearheaded by Ezra Pound, James Joyce, Hilda Doolittle, Amy Lowell, T.L. Hill, William Carlos Williams, Ford Maddox Ford, Richard Allington, while uh, it uh, acts evidently influenced T.S. Eliot, W.B. Bates, William Stevenson to a greater extent. What this is like uh, Wyndham uh, Lewis and uh, poet, other poets in the 1930s also were greatly influenced by this. Images liberated poetry from the shackles of classical discipline and waywardness of romantic uh, movement. Ezra Pound defined image as an, I quote, intellectual and emotional complex in an uh, instant in, of time, unquote, full stop. They experimented in verse libre or fairy words and believed in uh, unlimited freedom of expression. They endeavored to reveal the new consciousness in beautiful molded images. Though the movement was criticized for its obscurity, license and restrictions, it definitely inaugurated a distinctive feature of modernist poetry. The poets like W. H. Auden, Stephen Spender, Cecil de Lewis, Louis McNeese came to be known as the Oxford poets. They were all graduates from Oxford University and they carried the baggage of the university and the teaching techniques there. The Oxford poets affirmed the value of being 
contemporary of uh, expressing the common experience and uh, sensitivities of the age in which they lived. Two new poets, Dylan Thomas and George Barker, weaned poetry away from the political consciousness which characterized the poetry of the Oxford poets. And they gave prominence to religion and romanticism. And hence, they were termed as a neo-romantics. And their work was a branded neo-romanticism or carrying elements of neo-romanticism. The poets of the period were also influenced by the Second World War as it was elsewhere. The notable poets who composed war poetry are Sidney Keynes, Alan Louis, Alan Rock, Roy Fuller, among others. The themes which recur in their work are the boredom and frustration of service, life devastated by the war and uh, the contemporary conditions and uh, situation prevailing in the society around them at that time. The war also created a sense of frustration, a sense of waste and also created uh, apprehension among them about uh, the capability of mankind to withstand the Holocaust, to withstand the disaster, to face, confront and survive the scars of the war. The landscape of home and above all the courage facing up to the hardships of struggle and the possibilities of ultimate death also were their major concerns. The predominant note is that of sadness. Melancholy was all pervasive externally and also in the poetry of these poets. The poets of the apocalyptic movement center on the individual and not the community. J. Henry and Henry Trees, who edited the new Echo Calypse in the year 1940 and the White Horseman published in 1941 were the pioneers of this poetic movement. Nicholas Moore, G.S. Ere Fraser, Tom Scott and uh, Watkins were the major uh, poets of the times. They were the prominent members of the group also. The movement was opposed to the political affinities of Auden and his group. I mean, the apocalyptic poetry and the poets who championed the cause were opposed to the political affinities of Auden and his group. It expressed a hatred of the machine age and proclaimed its faith in the individual as a hope for humanity. Only man can redeem himself through his own efforts, they believed and they tried to advocate the dictum through their works. John Wayne, King Amis, John Halloway, John L. Davis, Philip Larkin, Thomas Gunn, Robert Conquest and Elizabeth Jennings were other prominent members of this group. The majority of these young poets belonged to working class or lower middle class and all of them were educated in Oxford or Cambridge universities. They were classified as a university wits or as a new Emsonians. Symbolist movement which began in the late 19th century in France continued to influence English writers. Symbolism emphasized the primary importance of suggestion and evocation in the expression of a private mood or reverie 
as employed by romantic poets like Shelley and Blake. The technique of French symbolism manifested itself as a, a sort of uh, using private symbols in a very subtle, unnoticeable manner. While uh, poets uh, like T.S. Eliot, Yeats, Pound, Joyce, Virginia Woolf, Wallace Stevens, Ernest Dawson, Dylan Thomas did not believe so and they adopted and tread along or walked pa along a newly chosen path. They used symbols in their own unique individual manner. Symbolism's influence on other arts also can be seen in myriad ways during the times. Dadaism, which emerged in the year 1916 out of disgust with the brutalities and destructiveness of the war, particularly the First World War, actually made exponents of Dadaism choose a different path to express their inner feelings poetically. Exponents of Dadaism are Tristan Zara, Marvel Duchamp, Mary Ray, Max Ernest and others. Surrealism was a revolutionary movement in painting, sculpture and uh, other arts as well as literature. Andre Briathan, Louis Aragon, Salvador Dali are its uh, prominent uh, members and exponents of the art. The influence of surrealism, surrealism can be found in many modern writers of prose and verse who have broken with a conventional mode of artistic organization to experiment with the free association, a broken syntax they used, non-logical, non-ideological order was their preference, chronological order they did not care for, and dreamlike net nightmarish sequences they painted, portrayed and glorified in their works. In their works, one can come across juxtaposition of the bizarre, shocking and seemingly unrelated images. This way, they carved a special niche for themselves. Now, let us uh, take a look at uh, the modern fiction of the times. The modern novel from the year 1900 to the present day can broadly be divided into three periods. The first period extends from 1900 to 1918. This includes such prominent novelists as Henry James, George Gissing, George Moore, Rudyard Kipling, Arnold Bennett, John Galsworthy, H. Wells, and Joseph Conrad, of course. The second period extends from the year 1919 to 1939 and covers the period between the two world wars. The major novelists who brought glory to themselves and to English literary scenario are Somerset Maugham, D. H. Lawrence, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, E. M. Forster, Aldous Huxley, Dorothy Richardson and uh, Catherine Mansfield. It's during the period that uh, the stream of consciousness method or a novel written on stream of consciousness technique gained popularity. The third period is a post-war period from 1939 to 1960. The chief exponents of the craft of writing novels during this period are Elizabeth Boyd, Ivy Crompton Burnett, Joyce Carey and Henry Green. Now, modernist drama, how does it differ from modern drama? 
एलिमेंट्स ऑफ रियलिज्म रोमांटिसिज्म इंप्रेशनिज्म एक्सप्रेशनिज्म कैन बी सीन इन मॉडर्न ड्रामा एंग्री यंग मैन वर ए ग्रुप ऑफ राइटर्स ऑफ द नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज हो वोसी फेरसली प्रोटेस्टेड एगेनिस्ट द प्रेवेलेंट सोशल मोर्स एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन that tried to control everyone including the society george osborne's uh, look back in anger pioneered the movement the poetic plays of w.b. yeats and t.s. eliot deserve special mention george bernard shaw henry jones arthur pinero john galsworth followed the tradition of the irish dramatics ipsen and road problem plays this is how they carved a separate track for themselves and moved along that path the theater of the absurd envisaged a radical departure from all kinds of conventional drama the theater of uh, absurd came to england with the staging in london of samuel beckett's play waiting for godot in the year 1955 the content of the theater was largely derived from the philosophical thought of kamu and sartre which may be called absurdism and existentialism respectively harold pinter's plays also fall into the same category and mold major theories of the 20th century deserve a look and brief discussion here marxism is a materialist philosophy which tries to interpret the world based on the concrete natural world around us and the society we live in according to marxism the society progresses through the struggle between the opposing forces are classes this in a nutshell can be called as a class struggle class struggle is the is fundamental to marxism and marxist ideology it is a struggle between the social status we may call so fundamental to classical marx thought or the concepts of base and superstructure which refer to the relationship between material means of production and the cultural world of art and ideas the foundation or base stand for the socio economic relations and mode of production and the superstructure stands for art law politics religion and above all ideology marxist criticism flourished outside european countries and reached far and wide today it is perceptible almost in all parts of the world either directly or in a very indirect subtle manner psychoanalytical criticism emerged in the 1960s and this was based on the works of the 19th century austrian intellectual sigmund freud who proposed in his theoretical opus the notion of the unconscious mind through his works like the ego the id beyond and the pleasure principle the interpretations of dreams totem and taboo etc also were interesting aspects to him the uniqueness of freud's exploration lies in his attributing to the unconscious a decisive role in the lives of human beings the unconscious is the rep- repository of traumatic experiences emotions unadmitted desires fears unresolved conflicts etc he later in his career suggested a tripartite model of the psyche dividing it into id ego and superego 
his studies related to the dreams are also much discussed and he has given prominence to the study of dreams and the unconscious state of human beings thinking structuralism is a, an intellectual movement which began in france in the 1950s and is first seen in the work of anthropologist claude louis strauss in the structural approach to literature there is a constant movement away from the interpretation of uh, the individual literary work and parallel drive towards uh, understanding the larger abstract structures which contain them structuralism replaces the author and places the reader as the central agency in criticism there is a shift one can notice the arrival of structuralism in britain and usa in the 1970s caused a great deal of controversy precisely because uh, literary studies in these countries were done mainly by following the tenets of new criticism post modernism is a socio cultural literary theory and it's a, a shift in perspective that has manifested in a variety of disciplines including social sciences and literature architecture fashion communications and technology it is uh, generally agreed that the post modern shift in perception began sometime back in the late 50s and is probably still and continuing post modernism can be associated with the power shifts and dehumanization of the post second world war situation and the era 2 and consumer capitalism the very term implies a, a relation to modernism post modernism shares many of the features of modernism both schools reject the rigid boundaries between high and low art they employ parody and posture and are also fragmented the post modernist uh, the writers distrust coherence and unity and they feel that a pointer is there between these two to distinguish them post more structuralism is an extension of post modernism post structuralism emerged in france in the late 1960s the two major figures most closely associated with this emergence are Roland Barthes and Jacques Derrida the death of the author published in the year 1968 hinges around which Barthes turns from structuralism to post structuralism in that essay he announces the death of the author which is a rhetorical way of asserting the independence of the literary text here onwards the text gains prominence and assumes significance the second key figure in the development of post structuralism in the late 1960s is the philosopher Jacques Derrida indeed the starting point of post structuralism may be assumed from the year 1966 when Jacques Derrida delivered an illuminating lecture deconstruction is a the theory propagated by him associated with his name deconstruction involves the close reading of texts in order to demonstrate that any given text has irreconcilably contradictory meanings rather than being unified logical whole there is a who coined the term deconstruction argues that in western culture 
people tend to think and express their thoughts in terms of binary oppositions. Through deconstruction, there is the aim to erase the boundary between binary oppositions and he wants to do or proceed in such a way that the hierarchy implied by the oppositions is thrown into question. Deconstruction is a post-structuralist theory. It is the first instance of philosophical theory and a theory directed towards the rereading of philosophical writings has been welcomed wholeheartedly and glorified. Post-colonialism is the next phase uh, in the evolution of uh, literary work in England. Post-colonialism is a critical analysis of history, culture, literature and modes of discourse of the former colonies of European masters. Focusing on the omnipotent past struggles between cultures and intersection of cultures which results in multiculturalism and polyvalence of culture. Post-colonialism analyzes the metaphysical, ethical and political concerns about cultural identity, nationality, gender, race, ethnicity, subjectivity, language and power ultimately. It focuses particularly on the way in which literature by the colonizing culture distorts the experience and realities and uh, inscribes the inferiority of the colonized people. This also is a literature which attempts to articulate the ideology, identity and reclaim their lost glory by the subjects in the former colonies of uh, European imperial rulers. It can also deal with the way in which literature in, in decolonized countries appropriates the language, images, scenes, traditions and so forth of the colonized countries or colonial masters. The major theoretical works in post-colonial theory include The Wretched of the Earth, published in 1961 by Franz Fanon, Orientalism, in, published in 1978 by Edward Said, The Other Worlds, published in 87 by Gayatri Spivak. The Empire Writes Back by Bill Ashcroft, published in 89. Nation and Narration, published in 1990 by Homi Baba. And Culture and Imperialism, published in 1993 by Edward Said, constitute basic uh, foundation for the study of post-colonial literature. Post-colonial critics reinterpret and examine the values of literary texts by focusing on the context in which they were produced and reveal the colonial ideologies that are concealed within them. Next movement that attracts the reader of English literature is feminism. Feminism as a movement gained potential in the 20th century, marking the culmination of a two centuries long struggle for cultural roles and socio-political rights. A demand vociferously made and the struggle carried on through relentlessly by women of those days. A struggle first found its expression in Mary Wollstonecraft's Vindication of the Rights of Women, published in 1792. Feminist political activists advocate social, political and economic equality between the sexes. 
they want parity between the genders gender discrimination should be dispensed with they demand and argue they campaign on issues such as reproductive rights domestic violence maternity leave equal pay sexual harassment at workplace discrimination at workplace and sexual violence they also demand that uh, their sexual preferences too need attention and should be matters of study and uh, discussion the basis of feminist ideology is that society is organized into a patriarchal system in which men have advantage over women the movement gained increasing prominence across the three phases or waves the first wave of feminism in the 19th and 20th centuries began in the us and uk as a struggle for equality and property rights for women by suffrage groups and activist organizations an important text of the first wave is virginia wolfs a room of one's own published in the year 1929 the second wave of feminism in the 1960s and 70s was characterized by a critique on patriarchy in constructing the cultural identity of women simon de beauvoir the author of second sex published in 1949 famously declared i quote one is not born but rather becomes a woman unquote full stop in the third phase particularly post 80s 1980s feminism was actively involved in the academia with its interdisciplinary associations with marxism psychoanalysis post structuralism dealing with issues such as language writing sexuality representation etc major books associated with this movement are alternate sexualities post colonialism by linda hutchinson and spivak and uh, vandana shiva's uh, book ecological studies and uh, helen show alters uh, text towards a uh, feminist poetics these feminists introduce the concept of gynocriticism a criticism of gyno texts by women who are not passive consumers but active producers of meaning present day feminist feminism in its diverse and various forms such as liberal feminism cultural or radical feminism black feminism womanism materialist or neo marxist feminism continues its struggle for better world for women and literature they produce and major contribution to the emergence of literary theory feminism has also found a radical expression in arts painting architecture and sculpture the latest areas of study include neo historicism reader response criticism cultural studies eco criticism and subaltern studies these areas are demanding more attention thank you very much for visiting e patashala